Hi, I'm Kim the Paper Traveler, and I have a huge book haul to share with you today. I have anywhere from modern and classic fantasy books, a few horror books, I have some beautiful books, of course, and a hodgepodge of other things. So let's get started with my haul. I had mentioned in a recent video that I was going to go to this antique mall, and in this antique mall, they have a lot of books. And I always head first to a certain section that has these science fiction and fantasy books, and I wound up hauling 11 books from there. They were all in great condition, and they cost anywhere from 3 to $7, so I felt like it was a wonderful day. Now, some of these books that you see are going to be part of a series that I don't already own, but I do not mind at all hunting down those other books that I need for a series. I love adding to my collection and building upon that library as time goes on. So the first one I'm going to show you is by Marion Zimmer Bradley and Deborah J. Ross. Now this is book three in the Cling Fire trilogy and it's called A Flame in Halley. And this one was written in 2004. The next three books I'm going to show you are from an author that I learned about through BookTube, and that's Dave Eddings. I have a few of his omnibus editions, but I didn't have any single books from him. And I found, I don't know if this is a trilogy or a series, but I found the first three books either way. And this is from the Tamale series. It starts out with Domes of Fire, The Shining Ones, and The Hidden City. And these were all written in the early 90s. Now, Dave Eddings also wrote some books with his wife, which I don't own any of those. So I found this one, Polgara, the Sorceress by Dave and Lee Eddings. I am just so thrilled in what great condition that these books are in also. And all of his books have the deckled edges, which I also love. Now, it looks like there was a book written before this one called Bagarath the Sorcerer that I will need to hunt down at some point. And this one was written in, I think, 1997. The next one was written by Marianne Zimmer Bradley, and I don't believe I had previously owned any books from her. So I'm glad to add some of her books to my collection. And this, this one is The Priestess of Avalon. And I fell in love instantly with this cover. Look, I love the ones that spread all the way across like that, too. When I first saw this cover, I thought, that artwork looks like Kanuku Y Crafts artwork. Because I have some books by Patricia McKillop that have the same artwork in it. And sure enough, it's, it's by her. And I, I really enjoy her artwork. But anyway, I'm glad to add this to my collection. The next one by Marianne Zimmer Bradley is called Firebrand. And this is a reimagining of the Trojan War. And it was written in 1987. Marianne Zimmer Bradley, Ghost Light. This one spreads across, but they run it with the writing on the back. I guess they need to advertise it somehow. And this one was written in 1995. I picked all these books up because of the name of the author. And for most of them, I didn't even look to see what they're about. But I, I've been wanting to read more classic fantasy. Marion Zimmer Bradley, The Forbidden Circle. This is an omnibus edition. It contains The Spell Sword and The Forbidden Tower. And this is part of her Dark Over novels. I... I believe there are at least two others. I don't know how much further it goes on, but I believe these were the first two in that series. And those books were written in 1974 and 1977. Next is Ellie Modisette Jr. This is part of his Recluse Saga. This book, I think, is just 10 years old, Sayador's Heirs. But that series goes way back. And it's one that I eventually want to read. And as I see these books, I pick them up. I've found several on Book Outlet already that I have in my collection. But this was in excellent condition. So I went and got this. And the next one I picked up is by Lois McMaster Bujold. She wrote the book The Curse of Chalion, which I have on my bookshelf. But I have not read yet. But this is Paladin of Souls. 
another beautiful book. At first I thought this was an ex-library uh, book, but it looks like it's from somebody's personal library and they just added that cover to it. Gorgeous artwork on that one too. The next three books are along the lines of horror type of books. The first book is The Historian by Elizabeth Costava. I found this one at the Goodwill store, actually. It's one that I'm adding to my collection. I'm not going to read it anytime soon, but I'm glad I had it for my collection for future reading. The reason I'm not going to read it anytime very soon is because it's a little over 900 pages. <laughs> it's a chunker of a book. This copy doesn't even look like it's been read and understandably why but I've seen mixed reviews about this book some felt like it was too slow some DNF'd it and some really enjoyed it so this is be this will be one that when I do read it I'll just take my time and savor it now this deals with finding out long time held family secrets and I believe I may be a relation to Vlad the Impaler. Uh, so that sounds like a very interesting, atmospheric, creepy premise to me. The next one was actually an Amazon suggestion. Uh, they've done me pretty well. I know people gripe about Amazon, but uh, I picked up a few good books because of their recommendations. And this is The Dollmakers by Lynn Buchanan. This is a debut author and I just thought this sounded very good. It, it's supposed to have good creepy world building, uh, lush prose, and I think it's about killer dolls. <laughs> Uh, when I got this in, I noticed this was a new release. I didn't even know that it was written in 2024. And it's also blurbed on the front by Brandon Sanderson and on the back by Wesley Chu. So this looks like a very promising book. It does have a few illustrations in here too. There's another illustration in the middle of the book there. So... I don't know if I'll get to this this year, but I'm glad to add it to my horror type of book collections. This next book is The King in Yellow by Robert W. Chambers. He was an author that wrote a series of short stories in 1895, and he was said to ins have inspired H.P. Lovecraft. So I thought that would be very interesting to read something from back during that times. Now, this book is divided in two sections. The first section is just a various collection of short stories, and the second half of the book has to do with the king in yellow and stories revolving around him, and that's mainly why I picked up this book, plus I love this cover. There are many editions of this book online if you look at it, but I really love this one, and it is a hardcover printed on the hardcover there. Now let's get into the miscellaneous type of books. The next one is The Garden of Evening Mist by Tan Twang Eng, a booktuber that I watched years ago, read books from this author. So I, I've had a couple of her books on my wish list, and uh, Blackwell's happened to have a sale on it, so I went on and picked it up for future reading. Her writing is said to have beautiful world building, and I love beautiful writing in books, so I thought I would give this a chance someday. If I like this one, I'm going to pick up one or two or more of this author's books. The next one was A Goodwill Find. I don't know what this book's about. I picked it up for the author. It's Barbara Kingsolver, Flight Behavior. This book is a little banged up, but I love how it feels. I, I don't know if you're like that too, but I love how a book feels in my hands. That's why I love reading physical books better, I think, than on Kindle. And it has the deckled edges, which I absolutely love. So I'm glad to add a Barbara Kingsolver to my collection. Now this next book is a new release for 2024. And it's the The Book of Days by Francesca K. I thought this sounded very good and I wanted to add it to my collection. It's described as a beautiful written novel of lives lived in troubled times and the solace to be found in nature and the turning season. Now, I am very much a nature inspired, inspired girly, so I wanted to add this to my collection for future reading. 
The next book is one that I picked up on Book Outlet when they're having a sale. It's part of a series that I have not started yet, but plan on doing it fairly soon, maybe 2025. This is The Narrow Road Between Desires by Patrick Rothfuss. And this is a novella that's written, I think, after the second book. And I do have the first and second books in paperback edition. And you can tell this book is a lot shorter than the normal book. So it'll look a little odd on the bookcase, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. So I thought I would pick this up since they had a really great sell on this book. And the next one is just really out of character for me, but I just felt compelled like I wanted to maybe start reading this series. I'm going to read the first book and see how it goes. It doesn't have the best reviews, but the movies for these are great. The, and it's Casino Royale. And this is the first James Bond 007 book written by Ian Fleming. So if I like this, and it's not very long either. If I like this, I will pick up a second book. It'd just be kind of a change in flavor for me because I tend to stick to certain type of genre books and thought it'd be good to mix it up a little bit. Now I love foodie type of books like foodie fiction. So I found this one at that uh, antique mall also. It's Delicious by Ruth Reichel. Now I have read a book from her. It's called Save Me the Plums, but it was more of a memoir from her. So I haven't read any of her fiction books. She just came out, I think this past year with another foodie fiction type of book. So I'll see if I like this one and I may possibly pick up her newest book if I do. Well, I debated whether to show this book in the hall or not, but since it is pumpkin season, I thought I would. My daughter and I recently went to the World Market. We love that store. We always come back with a cartload of stuff. And I saw this, the great big pumpkin cookbook. Now, it, it has been extremely hot here where I live, but it's getting ready. It's cooling down more, and I think it's going to be in the 70s this weekend, so I'm hoping to make some stuff from this book. It just all looks so good, and I put something in here to tab some pages of things I want to try. One thing about the World Market, it's also by a half-price bookstore, and of course, being a book lover, I had to stop there. My daughter wound up getting some cookbooks. She's getting more into cooking lately, but uh, I found a display table at the front of the store, and all of these books were $3 a piece, and I found a couple of good ones. The first one is a book that I've been wanting. I'm not really crazy about this edition of the book, but that's okay. This is the Book of the Month Club edition, by Sarah Addison Allen, Other Birds. Now, this is one of her latest book. I think this is her latest book that was written last year, and I've heard good things about this. I love her writing. It's about real world with magical elements in it. Um, all of her books have been. And the next book that was on the $3 table that I was really shocked to find is this one. This is called Bed 23 and Other Stories. Now, I haven't heard of that. I don't know what it's about, but what captured my attention, it's in the slipcase. So I thought, well, I'll open up and look at it. And it's a folio society book. I don't own any of those books, but I know they are quite expensive. So I was glad to add this for, to my collection. I'll show you a little bit of that. And the texture on the outside feels wonderful. And it was in wonderful condition. There's nothing wrong with it. The book is in really good condition. I thought maybe it was damaged or something, but it's not. Of course, Folio Society books do have illustrations throughout there too. So for $3 to add that to my collection, I thought that was a great deal. The next book I'm going to show you is actually a manga book. I recently tried to participate in a manga event that was going on, and I checked out some books from the library, and I wasn't really getting into them that much. But I remembered reading one years ago that I really enjoyed, and it was called The Girl from the Other Side. 
and I thought, well, I'll, I own the book, first book in paperback, and I, I thought, well, I'll get book two and read that then, but since I enjoy that so much. When I got online, however, I found this beautiful bind-up edition of the book, and this combines the first three stories. This is printed on the book itself. It's so gorgeous. Now, this is a demon on one side and a little girl on the other side, and they meet up in their world. It's been a few years since I read it, so my memory's a little foggy. I'm thinking I will go back and reread the first book and just continue on with that. But, oh, I am in love with this edition. And one thing about this book, too, it is really heavy. So it's really a quality made item. I'll show you a few illustrations inside. There is a colored illustration right there, but most of it is in black and white. Oh, I'm so happy to add this beautiful book to my collection. And speaking of beautiful books, this one has been on my wish list since I first saw it on Amazon. And it's Pan's Labyrinth. And this is written by Alistair Forsyth. This is actually, I didn't realize it until I got it in the mail. It's printed on the book itself there. And oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. Books with labyrinths in them are just they capture my attention, and I really love this. This does have a few illustrations throughout the book, too, and this is just going to be one of those magical type of books to read, and I love those for, like, when I'm in the mood to read something cozy, and I knew I wanted to add this beautiful book to my collection, so hopefully I'll be reading this soon so I can tell you what it's about. The next book is also from that book outlet cell that I found, the Patrick Rothfuss book, and it's Murtoff by Christopher Paolini. Now, this is part of the inheritance cycle. I have all four of those books. I bought them years ago when they first came out, and I read the first two books and part of the third and didn't finish the series. So I'm at the point now, since it's been many, many years ago, I feel like I need to go back and reread the book from book one. And uh, I just wanted to add this book to my collection. So when I do read those, I'll have this. This is featuring a character from that book. I'm going to be participating in a reading event starting October of the Dark Tower series. And I thought I owned all the books, but I didn't. Stephen King wrote a novella in this series, a novella for him being 300 and something pages that I didn't own. And that was The Wind Through the Keyhole. This is so beautiful, too. And I got lucky. I, I searched on eBay. I found this beautiful edition. It was like seven dollars or something like that. I've got a really great deal. It's it's like in new condition. So I will have this for the read along. The next one is a beautiful edition that came out earlier this year and I wanted to make sure I got this certain edition. This is a signed copy. It's the Shadow Key by Susan Stokes Chapman. And on the inside, of course, there's the end papers. Has this beautiful emblem there. Now, that is supposed to have some significance in the book. So, I wanted to make sure I purchased one of the first run printings of the book. I think that's the only ones that this is on. Now, this is not one I had mentioned at the time when I was going to buy this book. It's not one I'm going to read really soon, but I wanted to have it for my collection. Sometimes when things only run for a certain amount of time. You gotta get it while they have it. And I got this one on Blackwells. This book is set in 1783 London, and there's something creepy about this village. How influenced are you by booktube? Probably pretty influenced, right? This next book is a booktube maybe do it book, The Will of the Many by James Islington. Now, 
I love keeping up with what new fantasy books or other books are coming out. I love keeping up with all that and pick out ones that look interesting to me to maybe pre-order or keep on my wish list. And this is one um, I just didn't really appeal to me at first, but I kept seeing so, so many booktubers that enjoy this book. So when Amazon had a price drop on this, I went on and got this. However, I kind of wish I would have waited because they just recently came out with a new cover for this, which really surprises me since this book hasn't been out that long. And I think the new cover depicts more of the fantasy feel of book. Now, this one is quite beautiful and shiny and all that, but I love the other cover a little bit better, I believe. This next book I picked up because of the author. Of course, the cover drew my attention too. And this is The Silence Factory by Bridget Collins. I had hauled this from Blackwell's. I believe it's getting ready to come out in the U.S. Bridget Collins intrigues me. Her books do. I read her first book was The Binding. I really enjoyed that. It's just like a different type of premise to it. And I really enjoyed it. Her second book, um, I can't remember the name of it right now, but... It started out good, and then I didn't like it so much, and I didn't wind up finish it, which I try not to do that, but it does happen occasionally. But one thing that I know that her books are, are beautiful. On the inside, there's the end papers, first of all. Her covers, inside covers, are beautiful. Now, this one has to do something with a silk factory. So that's why you have the spider web there. Just so beautiful. I love having that creepy spider web under there. I love looking at spider webs anyway. I love it in the mornings when the dew are on spider webs. It's so, so beautiful. There's the front of the book. And here's the back. And this book is about a silk seller and about desire and corruption. I don't want to know too much about it going in, but like I said, this author intrigues me. The next book is one that as I was looking at fantasy books that were coming out, it immediately drew my attention when I saw the comparison of Lies of Locke Elamora. I, I love that book series. I'm so excited that Scott Lynch is writing again. He's going to be coming out with some novellas, I believe. And I'm so excited because I love that world. I love my fantasy books with a sense of humor. So I saw this book and pre-ordered this one. It's The Silver Blood Promise by James Logan. After I hauled this book, a couple of booktubers that I watch have read this and really enjoyed it also. I didn't watch all the review because I want to go into this somewhat blind, but... That's good. <laughs> That's good to hear. And the next book, I most likely will be reading this for spooky season. If you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen this book pictured. And this is The Witchstone by Henry H. Neff. Now, this is an author that I found about through Instagram. I found so, so many great books on there. This is one of those, if you like Terry Pratchett or uh, like the uh, Good Omens type of vibe book, uh, you may like this one. I have read just a little bit of it to see what it was like. It's about a, a demon and uh, he's, he's kind of funny. <laughs> I'll tell you more about this as I read it, but it just really seems like a fun premise for a book. Well, that's all of the book haul today. I've got some reading to do. <laughs> Goodbye.